Um, and this can also be shown by looking at the relativity of perceived needs and income satisfaction. Uh, and we have here some evidence, you know, from uh, India. Uh, somebody reports, you know, in India, I want a son and I want a piece of land and I am now working on land owned by other people. Uh, I would like to buy some better clothing for my wife and uh, I would like to have a cow for milk. And if I could do this, I would be happy. And so uh, this person is living uh, at about 10 US dollars a month at the time of this uh, survey. And um, now, of course, his wishes are to have uh, his own land, to have one cow and to have better clothes for his wife. Another one in India um, wants to buy decent food for his family um, and he would like uh, to feed his family. This is all what he wants. Another one would like to have a water tap and a water supply in the house. It would also be nice to have electricity. Uh, in the future, I will not get any disease, is the wish of another person in India. Now I am coughing. I also hope I can purchase a bicycle. I hope my children will study and that I can provide them with an education. So you see how low these aspirations are. And in the United States, in comparison, uh, people say, if I could earn more money, then I would be able to buy our own home and have more luxury like better furniture, a new car and more vacations. Another one, I would like a reasonable enough income to maintain a house, have a new car, have a boat and send my four children to private schools. Another again mentions a new car uh, and more money for myself. I would like to play more golf and hunt more than I do. And uh, so you can see that these aspirations are very different and um, still they are in so different worlds that the one does not affect the other. So the American who wants a boat and, and play more golf doesn't see his water tap as a source of happiness in the same way like the Indian person sees the water tap as a source of happiness because this is what is lacking in his life, right? Um, so this this relativity of perceived needs, perceived needs um, underlines the fact that our perception of our happiness in relation to our wealth is a relative one. And um, now also this has been disputed, um, particularly what Easterlin said that international comparisons don't show um, a relationship uh, between income and happiness. And this has been disputed. Um, here we have another figure where this uh, becomes more obvious. And here we have actually a line drawn, um, uh, a straight line, you know, it's a log scale. So it's an, uh, it's in reality, it's an uh, exponential line uh, between uh, income, real GDP per person and uh, life satisfaction on the left side. And you can see that uh, except for a few outliers, you do have a visible um, correlation here. Interestingly, some of the outliers are Denmark, which has a much higher happiness than it should have, and Finland, Denmark and Finland. Uh, Jamaica is another one in a lower income bracket, uh, very positive. And then you have some negative outliers, of which one of the most obvious is Hong Kong. Hong Kong has a very high material standard, very high income, but a very low satisfaction. The satisfaction of, of Hong Kong is like uh, um, that of, of um, some East European countries, right? Which are uh, generally not very happy in these surveys. Uh, I ca cannot clearly see now what the others are, but you can um, look them up in the paper. So this is very interesting to compare Hong Kong, Denmark and Jamaica. And then you can ask, okay, what are the factors there? that play a role, because obviously these are outliers for some reason, right? If um, Hong Kong is much more unhappy in Jamaica and Denmark are much more happy than they should be according to this income. Uh, why is this the case? Uh, can you try to make a guess why this is the case? 
And the answer might be that not only the income is relevant for happiness, but other factors. For example, the political system, freedom, we know, and we will talk about it later with layered freedom and democracy, have a positive correlation with happiness. The weather, Hong Kong has a very adverse weather, right? In summer, it's very hot, it's very um, humid, you have typhoons. Uh, summer is not enjoyable at all in Hong Kong. Uh, while in countries like Denmark, especially Jamaica, right, you can imagine uh, that the weather is a constant source of pleasure. Uh, you have cultural differences, you know, um, um, Germans are, are uh, by cliche typically, you know, uh, closed and unfriendly people and Jamaicans are exactly the opposite. And there is some truth to that, right? The culture has a feeling of uh, living in a particular way and, and uh, lots of music uh, comes from Jamaica, you know, lots of uh, partying and rum and so on are in our imagination when we think of Jamaica. None of these things uh, suggest themselves when we think of Hong Kong, right? So um, there are cultural differences. There's infrastructure, schools, hospitals, transport, but also high rises, you know, stress, uh, living in a big city. Uh, and safety in society is another important factor, which would explain, for example, Denmark, social security, as well as safety from crime. These are things that you don't have to the same extent in countries like Jamaica. Uh, Easterlin uh, makes an analogy with height. He says the Easterlin paradox we can think of as height. Uh, if you look at height differences um, within one country, um, you would have people self-report, you know, how tall do you think you are, very tall or medium tall or not tall at all. And then people would report more or less their relative height within their own population. And this would apply to a country with very tall people and equally to a country with very short people. Still, uh, the same percentage would report themselves as being tall uh, or medium tall or short. Uh, the, the people who are generally shorter would not report all of them I am short because I compare myself, you know, with some uh, Central African person who is very high. Uh, but instead, they would report themselves as being short or tall in relation to other people in their environment. But when we compare across countries, then, of course, we can see that some of them are uh, taller than others.